Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with the 2007 Ford Focus. It's not the custom cars you typically see the master working on, but people ask us all the time, do we do the daily drivers? Indeed, we do. We're going to talk a little bit about the braking system, and the master's going to break it down technically for you. But why did this car come in, please? So, to start, this 2007 Ford Focus powered by a Ford 2.0 liter naturally aspirated is a tire shredding 86 horsepower. I kid you not. Hold on, guys. So, this thing actually came in because the client complained of noticing there was a lot of heat from the left front wheel, so much so that it actually melted a hole in the plastic center cap. And that is how gangster this ride is. It came with plastic center caps, <laughs> not even true wheels. So we that is- We do here too, right? There you go. So that's actually a true sign of a problem, either in a hub bearing assembly or in some part of your brake system as well. That causes that much heat to generate, typically a sign of something either failing bearing related or something locking up from a brake related standpoint. And that's exactly what we had happen. Left front caliper locked out on this thing. So we did go ahead and tear this thing all the way down and we are going all the way. So it's going to be a true start to finish rebuild of the entire front brake system, which includes the rotor, the caliper, the pads, the mounting brackets, the slide pins, the hardware, and the flexible hoses as well, since these things are that old. So, Bob, we hear a lot of people running specials for $100 for brake pads uh, on your car. Let's talk about what does that really buy the average consumer? Is that a good, solid brake job? No, so typically when you see like these commercials, right? You see these commercials on TV, you see like these quick little clips that'll say like, uh, you know, bring your car in for $79.95, you know, brake pad, whatever, brake service, right? If you read the fine print at the bottom, it'll always say per axle, right? Which means that's per side. So double that price right away, that's just an entry. And that typically only gets you a set of brake pads. That doesn't actually get you a full service where you're either rebuilding, remachining your rotors, which is pretty much a long lost art as well, yeah. um, or replacing the rotors. So it's just a basic brake service, which is check your pads, pull them off and change them, and that's about it. So Bob, let's talk a little bit, why is it so important to do a thorough brake job? On this particular P uh, um, model, Bob, we had a caliper lockout. This is the caliper itself. Could you please talk a little bit about what I'm holding in my hand and how this functions? So just a brake caliper, very simple design. A lot of people think that these are very complex. They're not, they're fairly simple. It's nothing more than a cast, in, in this case, a cast iron caliper. You have an inlet side, which is your brake hose, where your brake hose screws in that supplies brake fluid pressure into the back side of this round bore, which is your cylinder, your piston, right inside. That's sealed with an O-ring on the outside and one also on the inside. And that just creates brake pressure behind that piston. The piston pushes out when you apply the brake pedal and squeezes the brake pads down on some of the surfaces of the disc. And that's what slows your car down. So basically, Bob, when the brake pad is sitting inside the caliper itself, when you push on the brake, it pushes pressure on the rotor itself, correct? That's right. This one, Bob, uh, got physically so hot um, the rotor did what? Tell everybody what happened with the rotor on the So you can actually see the, the orange that this has turned on the outside from how hot it has truly gotten. This thing did fuse itself to the front of the hub. Luckily we were able to save it and pull that thing off the face of the hub, but it did generate that much heat that it actually, from heating up and cooling back down, fused itself to the hub bearing itself. You can see physically the hammer marks on the back of this rotor, ladies and gentlemen, where the pads got that hot. But let, tell everybody what this is. This is the rotor we've got in our hand, and we see a bunch of holes in this rotor. What is that for? It's just for venting, keeping the rotor cool. Helps keep the rotor cool. Ladies and gentlemen, the pads physically sit like this on the rotor and get very, very hot. That's the value of these car, race cars going out there and bringing their technology into us. So this rotor, ladies and gentlemen, is no longer any good. Bob had to physically knock it off the car to get it off. But what are we holding up right here? So that is the brake caliper mounting bracket. And this is what the brake pads sit in, correct? Yep. I see, Bob, this is really clean here compared to that. Why is that? So that's just your channel where your brake pads actually sit on the upper and lower portion. They all have channels on them or pins if they are just a, you know, depending on the style of the brake caliper and the bracket. Every one of these designs will be different, but still fairly easy to deal with maintain and service. So, Bob, this is the caliper bracket here. What are these bolts that we're holding here, Bob? So those are the actual mounting bracket uh, mounting hardware bolts. So those two are your main large ones that hold the bracket onto the A-frame or the control arm. And then you also have slide pins that hold the caliper on to that bracket. And Bob, these are the slide pins you're referring to? Yep. I see, Bob, you've taken the time with a steel brush to clean all of the threads in here very pretty. Yep. They're all clean, there's no debris in it. 
And I also see, Bud, your scotch bright was out here a few moments ago. You cleaned all of the rust off of these slide pins. Why is it so important to get these clean, Bud, and smooth? Well, any sort of rust that you have or corrosion or contamination that may be in any sort of moving part of the brake system, yes. in this case, the slide pins. Oops, I'm sorry. The caliper actually just sits on here. This is more of like a, a stud, essentially, that the caliper sits on and slides back and forth as your brake pads wear down, as you step on that brake pedal, as you apply the brake and let off, your caliper does slide on that. So you don't want to have anything on there that's gonna cause any sort of binding friction. That could also lead to things like calipers hanging up and wearing down the pads too fast, or even causing a lockout on this like this. And so Bob, I finally see here, before we get into reassembly, a synthetic wheel bearing grease you have on your build car. What will you be using the synthetic wheel bearing grease for? So that's just a grease that you are gonna use just on the coating of the slide pins. Any surface areas that you are going to have that friction or that movement going on, just a very small amount, a very thin amount, not a lot, not caking the stuff on there, just a thin amount to keep it from being metal to metal contact. And Bob, how about the people up in the Northeast or in the snow belts and things like that. Why is it so important to use something like this? I know you always go the extra mile. It's not a pad slab, a $79 pad slab. Why is it so important to use this for people who live on those snow laden roads? Well, just for that reason, for salt and corrosion. It does, it locks them out. And ladies and gentlemen, this piston inside of here will develop salt scarring and will freeze up in this piston cup as well, Bob, uh, if it's not maintained as well. That's right. So Bob, let's get ready. That's We've explained everything to everybody. Let's get ready to put this roll back together. Sounds good. Synthetic wheel bearing grease across the sliding points as we heard Bob talk about earlier. This will allow things to slide much smoother and keep from sticking. a very very smooth brake pedal itself. These are the slide pins that we talked about earlier with synthetic wheel bearing grease. So now that we've got everything assembled on the front drive axles, the brakes, the calipers, the new hoses, the next step is to bleed your brake system. In this case, what we did is we opened the brake bleeders on the back of the calipers and did what we called a gravity bleed. This just simply means that brake fluid from the brake fluid reservoir ran down through the calipers and kind of preliminarily set them up to make the bleeding process a little bit easier. But what are you filling up over here now? So since we did open up the lines did have that loss of fluid there but also the loss of fluid from the old calipers and now it's an empty new ones so we do have to go ahead and as you mentioned gravity bleed to start to fill up all that air pocket system with fluid replace all of that install new fluid here in the master cylinder the reservoir for the brake system and continue to top it up and make sure it's full after we are bleed, bleed and flush through the lines but one of the things you just said is to continue to top it up what happens if we omit that step and we just start bleeding the brakes so a lot of people actually do mess up in the fact that you know once you, you have to have an understanding once you start pumping on that brake pedal and opening those bleeder valves down the brake calipers or wheel cylinders whatever it is you're working with you are letting that fluid from your reservoir go through the master cylinder through the lines and out the bottom side so you do need to replenish that at the top side so it doesn't go down to the bottom which gets air in and then you have to restart the entire process again so Bob, is there a certain brake procedure or are you just going to start with this one and then go to that one and over there? So no, you actually want to start with your furthest wheel from the master cylinder, right? And that gets most air out that direction and then it individually pulls it off the small and the shorter lines as you go through the system. In this case, we are going to start with the right rear, which is passenger rear, then we'll do driver's rear, then we'll do passenger front, and then driver's front. And Bob, how do you do that procedure? It takes two people typically, unless you have a uh, suction tool. Yeah, so we're going to do a manual lead on this thing. It's actually going to be a two-person system. We're going to be in 
inside the car, pumping the pedal and holding it down to the floor while the other opens the bleeder after that pressure builds up under the pedal. And then as I open that bleeder, it will allow the pedal to drop down, which it pushes through all the pressure. Very important when you're doing it a two person system like that, once the, uh, somebody says pump it up, you repeat their command from pumping. So hold it down, repeat their command holding, then they know when to open and close that bleeder, which does not allow air back into the line prematurely, thus having to start all over again. Let's jump in here. And pumping! Pumping! Let's get in here, bleed these brakes, and take her out on the test drive. So there it is, Bub. We've replaced the calipers, the hoses, the brake pads, the rotors, and put the wheels back on. Even salvage, Bub. Two tires that had nails in them and a hubcap that melted down from the excessive heat. That's right, man. So let me tell you, this monster is ready to go in the streets. No, no, no. Palm Beach International Raceway. All right, we're gonna go run with the Ferrari. Make sure put your helmet on. <laughs> so yeah, not a bad install. The same total install time with two people doing it is about an hour. That's exactly what you get. If you're not getting the slide pens loop, if you're not getting the mating surfaces loop, if you're not getting everything clean, somebody taking the time to really do the job right, it's not worth it, Bob. It's not just not. All you're doing is throwing a set of pads. It's a band-aid over a cut, isn't it? And this one, as simple as it's just like, you know, the, that small stuff where like you get a chance to look at your car. This one came in for obviously brake failure. And what do you know? You find out there's two nails in these tires as well. So it's just like, it's perfect being able to get your hands on it and see what's going on. Low, you started receive looking at it, found two nails in the tire, 